So two videos ago, I was at this exact location here. The conditions were incredible. Many of you said that that video was one of your favourite videos I've ever made. And I understand why, because it was amazing. And tonight I've come back to the same location and the weather forecast is exactly the same as last time on the weather forecast anyway, not quite in reality. And it's low tide once again. So I was so excited about coming here tonight with the prospect of filming another video like that and maybe this time going further down the beach to get more of the sunset in amongst the pools of water. But I have arrived here and the conditions aren't quite as good. We have some lovely clouds in this direction, but the rest of the beach, which was beautiful last time, is completely clouded over. And the, the direction the sun is due to set is very cloudy too. So I'm not particularly hopeful for a good sunset tonight. But I'm also feeling like I want to just go and sit somewhere and watch things unfold. Maybe get my long telephoto lens out and try and get some birds flying through some of the beautiful clouds. But not here on the beach. I'm feeling quite pulled tonight to go up onto the headland to do that. And if we don't get any images, there's something I want to speak to you about in this video. And that is the reason why I stopped sharing my camera settings in my videos. And there's a few reasons for that. I'll get onto that later in the video. But uh, yeah, let's see where this evening takes I me. Mean, there's two hours until sunset. Not looking too hopeful, but we're out and about and we'll see what we can capture while we're here. Well, last night didn't really materialise in the way that I'd hoped it would. And as a result, I just didn't take any images. What I'm finding at the moment is I'm being really pulled towards photographing interesting lights, beautiful lights on water and patterns, shapes and textures. And last night with that really flat, dull grey sky, there was no definition in the clouds or very minimal anyway. There was no light and the water as a result looked very flat and because of the things that are interesting me at the moment I just didn't feel inspired to take any images last night. Of course there was images to take but it just wasn't the things that are really enticing me and interesting me at the moment. But because it's almost been two weeks since I last filmed a video I wanted to, as I said at the beginning, address this question of why I no longer share my camera settings in videos. Because a few of you have been asking me to share the settings and probably about four months ago now, I stopped doing it. And there's a number of reasons for this. And I think in sharing these reasons, there's possibly some interesting thoughts within that that may help you, not just with your photography, but actually in life in general. It's probably gonna be quite a philosophical video, this one and I'm just chilling and enjoying the sunshine today. So there's probably not gonna be any photography as such in this video, but it's gonna give you things to think about and hopefully implement into your own photography and possibly life as well. So the first reason that I don't share my camera settings anymore is when I first began YouTube, for about the first two years, I never shared my camera settings on my videos. I personally didn't feel like there was a need to. I think it's because my videos were more about showcasing the beauty of nature, me being out there, my enthusiasm, my connection with it, and the joy that going out with my camera brought to me and in turn, hopefully inspired you to get out and do similar things in your life. And then I was getting questions of people asking me about my camera settings. So I began to include them in videos. But I realised that every time I was putting these camera settings on a video, I didn't feel good about it. I felt like it was such a chore. I didn't feel like it was a necessary part of the story. I didn't feel like it really mattered. And I just felt this enormous pressure when I was doing it. You know, editing videos were taking so much longer because I was having to put all this text under every single image. I was having to look back at my settings and work out exactly what settings I used, which meant that editing videos would often take sometimes two hours more than they did before I started doing all of this. So I found that a bit of a chore and I already felt like sharing my settings, just I didn't understand me personally why that was necessary. 
And the kind of nail on the head moment for me was I had a discussion with a friend earlier this year who's also a professional photographer. And she said the same thing, that people are always wanting to know what camera settings she's used. But she also was kind of struggling with this concept because she realises, as I think I do as well, that you cannot replicate somebody's photograph. So I could take a photograph in a location today, show you the exact point I took the photograph from, the exact settings that I used, and share that with you. You could go to that location tomorrow, set up in exactly the same spot. But in order to get a similar photograph, you wouldn't necessarily be using the same settings because it would all determine on the weather, the light that day. You know, if I was photographing a really bright sunny day, my shutter speed would probably be faster than your shutter speed if you were shooting the next day when it was cloudy and rainy because you'd need a longer shutter speed to get more light into the camera to take that photograph. So there's this sort of feeling there of why am I sharing settings? Because actually you cannot recreate the image even using exactly the same settings. But there's also this feeling as well of, I feel like sharing settings and saying this is what I do is almost made me feel like I was telling people what to do. And that is not my vision and how I, I work at all. Like, what I want is to empower people to find their own voice through photography, to work out what works for them, what inspires them, where they want to go, what settings they want to use. And the biggest advice I always give to people who are starting out in photography is to learn the basics of your camera. So to learn your settings, most importantly, obviously, your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO. Learn the camera you've got, and then you can reintroduce other things into it if you want to. But see, once you know the basics of camera settings, you then have the freedom to do whatever you want with those camera settings. You can decide if you want to use the camera settings that you've learned work best in certain lights or certain moods or certain subjects, or you can be a rebel and go out there and be creative and do something a little bit different. This is the joy of photography. It's not about saying this is how you do photography. It's about saying, these are the settings on your camera. This is what each setting does. If you want this result, using this, these settings will probably give you that result. But every single image you take is going to be different because your location is going to be different. The light's going to be different. And also, if, even if you tried to replicate a photograph that I'd taken, unless you're using exactly the same camera and exactly the same lens and exactly the same settings on exactly the same weather conditions and mood as I have, you know, unless you've got all those things, which are not easy to, to replicate, especially the weather and the mood, you're not going to be able to use the same settings that I use to get your image. But something even deeper here is this sense of why would you want to copy somebody else's photographs? And of course, learning about settings can really help you if you're beginning photography. But for me in my own work, I found when I've gone out there and copied what other photographers are doing, I never feel fulfilled because that's not what I actually really want to do. You know, I've spoken many times about iconic locations. They do not inspire me. I think they are beautiful and I love being there and looking at them and admiring them, but they do not inspire me creatively. And when we go out and we copy other people's work or we copy the locations that people are going to or we copy the camera settings and all those kind of things, often it's a sense that we believe within us that we need to do what this photographer is doing to get those results or to get those images. But you'll see that some of the best photographers in the world, it's nothing to do with the camera they've got and the settings they're using. It's to do with their dedication, it's to do with their vision, it's to do with how they go out there and connect with, the, with the world around them, what they see when they're out there, what entices them. It's the early starts, the late evenings, it's looking at the weather, it's chasing the lights, it's hard work and dedication that makes them brilliant photographers that they are. And the camera and the settings are just part of that journey, but I just, I've never felt this deep connection with almost like the material. So you can see your camera, you can see the settings, but what you can't see is how you feel about your subject matter. 
And that is what I find the most important part of my photography is when I go into a location, I feel into that location and I then take images based on what I'm, I'm finding and what I'm feeling drawn to. And because I've been doing photography now for so many years, I don't even think half the time about what settings I'm using. In fact, I'd say 80% of my images are taken on exactly the same aperture, exactly the same ISO. You know, and I actually, the majority of the time, shoot on aperture priority mode, which some people find mind-blowing because we've been taught for so many years that we have to shoot on manual. But why do we have to shoot a manual when some cameras now, like the camera that I use, are so incredibly advanced that aperture priority mode is incredibly accurate nowadays? And I get a lot of people sometimes coming to me and saying, I have to shoot a manual and I find it so overwhelming. And I like to say to them, you don't have to shoot a manual. If you want to shoot a manual, go for it, learn how to do it. I shoot a manual if I'm doing long exposures and if I'm doing astrophotography. But other types of photography, like my landscapes, 95% of them are taken on aperture priority mode because it takes one step away from me, one less thing I've got to think about. And therefore, when I'm sharing my settings, one of those settings I've not even thought about, the camera's deciding my shutter speed for me. All I have to do is make sure that it's quick enough to freeze the subject I want to freeze in my, in my frame, or it's quick enough that if I'm hand-holding my camera, I'm not going to have a bloody image, unless I'm doing ICM, of course. So I think this is why I've stopped sharing my camera settings, because I don't feel like me sharing my settings is going to benefit anybody. Not really. What's going to benefit you watching the videos that I produce is giving you the inspiration and the motivation to go out there and do these things for yourself. It's giving you things to think about, things to ponder, things to ask yourself. It's not about me sitting here and saying, these are the settings that I use and this is the right settings and you must do this yourself because that's not me at all. I'm all about helping you find your voice through photography. And that is the most important thing to me. So like I say, when you begin photography, learn the settings, of course learn the settings, especially for certain subjects. You need to know what the aperture does in order to create certain results. But actually I've worked with a few people this year who shoot in complete automatic and they love it and it works for them. Who am I to tell them that automatic's wrong and that they should be shooting in complete manual or semi-manual mode? It's not up to me to say that. They're enjoying their photography. And what they want to learn more than anything is light, composition, atmosphere. They're not that bothered about the settings. But in time, they may want to learn those settings. But those are the reasons. I've never felt compelled to say that settings and how I shoot is right. I've never felt happy when I've been spending those additional hours putting settings into videos. And it to be honest, was making me lose my love for creating videos because I'd love the, the formation of the video, you know, the filming it, the, the putting the story together, the putting the music over it, thinking about the dialogue. But the moment I came to the end of the video and I was putting in those settings, I just hated it. And I wanted to listen to that and think, this isn't working for me. Yes, there's people out there who want to know what settings I'm using, but me sitting there saying what settings I'm using and typing them into the video it's not working for me. If you want to learn settings, there's so many YouTube channels out there and so many photography courses that can help you do that. But for me, it's just not, not what I want to do. I want to empower you, inspire you, and help you discover what photography can do for you personally. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to give you suggestions and it's up to you to decide if that works for you or if it doesn't. I'm here to ask you questions to help you unearth what your passion is as a photographer. I'm not here to tell you this is the right way to do things, this is the wrong way to do things. I think that's something that I'm gonna be bringing into my work more moving forwards. My teaching is all gonna be about that empowerment, that inspiration. And of course, I'll throw in technical aspects of photography for those who want to know that. But really for me, it's all about the experience and getting you to experience that for yourself and getting you to discover yourself and your photographic voice. That is what's important to me, not the technicalities, because I'm not a technically minded person, not at all. And I can't preach something 
that doesn't resonate with me. And before I sign off this video, just to remind you all, if you're struggling with some of these concepts and you feel like you need some one-to-one -one support to find your own voice as a photographer, you can of course sign up to my one-to-one -one online photography mentorship. And I now offer free 15 minute calls for anyone who is unsure if the mentorship is for them and they'd like to learn more. So yeah, get out there and find out what works for you. Follow your voice. Do you want to be somebody who follows the same settings, the same photographic subjects, the same compositions as everybody else? And we all go through that process when we're learning photography. But if you're at that stage in your pho photography where you want to do something different, listen to where you're being guided and go with the flow. And if you want to be a rebel and try new settings, go for it. New creative expressions don't come from people who follow the rules. They come from those who feel compelled to try something different. And photography should be no different. I don't think it should anyway. Feel free to do what you want with your camera and photograph whatever you want. As always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you all again next time.